Minister, um, I wrote to you recently uh, last year why this Morris report hasn't been published. Um, clearly, um, Board and the Gun are failing the greyhound industry uh, with their incompetence and they don't seem to have any regard for the integrity uh, of the sport. And the government uh, seems to support them no matter what, uh, no matter how incompetent they are. Uh, I presume you shall, you shall support them 100% until you support them zero because uh, it's really a bit frightening that uh, irrespective of how bad and incompetent they are, you seem to stand by them. Minister, your response. Well, I'm not going to... Re um, uh, respond to those comments. They're uh, not part of what the question is, and I think um, it uh, befits the, the Deputy to make comments like that, unless he has proof. But notwithstanding that... Uh, deputy, without... without uh, well, maybe you come up with the proof. The Morris report was carried out at the request of Board Nagon by Professor Tim Morris, the independent <laughs> scientific advisor to the Greyhound Board of Great Britain on anti-doping and medication control. The purpose of the report was to examine the use of doping and medication in the greyhound sector in Ireland and it will enable Bordnagon to develop further its policy and regulation. The Welfare of Greyhounds Act 2011 and Bordnagon's Welfare Code of Practice does provide a strong framework for regulation and enforcement and Bordnagon has made progress in tightening up on the regulation in recent times. Publication of, while, while publication of the report is a matter for Gordon more than gone, it is my understanding that the board expects to publish this report within the coming weeks. And once the P Morris report is published, I will examine its recommendations to determine what uh, are, uh, any further measures are required. Thank you, Minister. Deputy Wallace. Thank you, uh, 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 Minister. If you think it's okay for them to have a report for 12 months and not publish it, well, I find that really interesting. Uh, that's, a, that's a, a very interesting position for you to take. I mean, with regard to drugs and greyhounds, right, the, the amount of, of people who, who own and train greyhounds in Ireland who have contacted me who are just so disillusioned with what's going on and they're so disheartened about the fact that there just isn't proper procedure uh, in place. And I can't understand why the government doesn't want the thing to be done right. I mean, can you, can you actually tell me why it's okay to have a report for 12 months and not publish it? I'm very interested to hear your answer, Minister. I think 12 months ago, it was commissioned 12 months ago. Just wait a second. Um, I was um, chair of the committee the last time that was looking to have the legislation, the new Greyhound Act, brought before the committee for pre legislative scrutiny. Since I've come in about eight, eight weeks ago, I've asked the officials to draft that heads of bill to send it to the Agricultural Committee. I mentioned it before we come in to the chamber here, so that the entire industry, and I do agree, and I've had plenty of contact, and contact from all sources, and several that claim to represent the industry. And I'm trying to meet as many of them as possible to, to, so that I can meet everybody who represents the industry. But this industry, this group itself, and I would say this, are, are, are not cohesive themselves as a collective. And there needs to be work done, and I'm prepared to help to make that happen. And I'm as interested in making sure that this sector actually continues. Um, so... The Boris report will be published. Its findings will be acted upon. There are some procedures in place already, and there will be more. Believe me, there will be more. But until we have some sort of uh, shape thrown on this sector, it, it is doing itself no favours either. Well, listen, Miss, I mean, I hope that you do have uh, a good attitude and you do uh, actually... Uh, yeah, well, look here. I mean, listen. I may mean, I mean, give you the benefit of the doubt. You've only just arrived in the scene, right? So, listen. I haven't shot you yet, but I'm just, I'm just really taken aback that that the government, for a long time now, have been so tolerant of an incompetent board and gone. Now, listen. Uh, recent, someone just told me that uh, when someone presented the greyhound, luckily uh, pretty, uh, pretty for a sales trial at Thurles Greyhound Stadium on 23rd of June last year, with the prohibited substance uh, flunoxin, the only outcome was the nature of the substance flunoxin was noted and a minimum fine of 100. Euro applied. 
uh, it's, it's completely not nonsensical. The testing itself costs more than the fine. And in the UK, the Greyhound Board Disciplinary Committee fined an Irish sales agent £2,000 in November last year and banned him for three months for the presence of the same prohibited substance. And I mean, it is little wonder that the English are saying that, that, that they're recommending to their uh, owners and trainers not to buy Irish dogs because uh, they're drug to the ears. Right? I mean, that's what they've said, right? I mean, uh, recently... Yes, uh, board and the Gun Control Committee uh, trainer, uh, again, at, at the Board Control Committee in May, trainer Graham Holland was up for the presence of the prohibited substance in four of his dogs. Thank you, he Dr. was represented by a legal team and he got off scot free because he had, uh, he had a fucking legal presence. And I mean, there was another guy who had just one dog up who didn't have a legal representation and he was fined 100 euros. So, well, what they garner from that is if you have a legal presence, she can get away with anything. But unless you have, well, then you might pay a little fine. Thank you, Deputy Minister. <laughs> you could repeat that um, uh, 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 analogy in a lot of ways. Just to say that Port Nagan um, has already taken some steps. Now, and I list them just so, as you do know, they're on the record. The steps included already include out of competition testing at kennels, publication of laboratory results where, where there is an advance an adverse analytical finding, prohibition of a greyhound from racing where an adverse analytical finding has been made until such time as a further test for a prohibitive substance has been carried out and the result is proved to be negative, establishment of a list of laboratories approved for the testing of B sample in place of the public analysis, and publication of control committee decisions and the reasons for them. 